Well, in at least 4 million homes, children are being exposed to high levels of lead right now. According to the CDC, lead poisoning can lead to learning and behavior problems, can even slow down development. But the good news, lead poisoning can be prevented. We have Dr. Elizabeth Mead here from Swedish Medical uh, Center to explain. Thanks for joining us uh, once again. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Uh, how does lead affect a child's body? So it can affect their body in different ways. The, the thing that we get most concerned about is actually how it affects their brain. Mm -hmm. So it can cause behavioral problems. It can become aggressive, impulsive. It can contribute to kind of ADHD-like behaviors and actually can contribute to a drop in IQ and really poor school performance. Wow. What were some of the symptoms uh, that you know parents should look out for yeah. if, if the kids are exposed to lead? So some kids can have abdominal pain. Some kids might complain of nonspecific things like headaches or just kind of not feeling well. And then behavioral changes are the big ones. So if suddenly your child is really aggressive or impulsive or they're really having a hard time paying attention in school and that's very new, they never were that way before, then it's a good thing to look into. Are some children uh, more at risk than others? Well, kids are more at risk than adults for lead poisoning for multiple different reasons. So one is that they're just smaller, so it takes less content of lead to actually have an effect on them. Right. Two is that especially little kids tend to crawl all over the ground and put things in their mouth, and that's one way that kids can often be exposed. Yeah. And then three is just that their brain is developing, and so it's a it's a really difficult time for them to have any negative exposures. You know, a lot of you know since uh, they, they change the paints in, in a lot of the the home home paints, you know, we don't hear much about lead exposure, but right. it's still kind of a prevalent prevalent topic. It is, and yeah. actually in 2016, the American Academy of Pediatrics really came out and said there is actually no safe level of lead in a child's blood. Wow. So we used to say we got concerned about a level of 10 or higher, mm -hmm. and now we know that even at half that level, kids are starting to have effects. Wow, so what can parents do to kind of you know prevent lead exposure? Yeah. So if you live in an older home, yeah. it's a good idea to have your paint tested if you still have original paint. If you're gonna be remodeling or doing construction on your house and it's an older home, that's a time when kids really tend to get exposed. It can certainly um, be in your water supply, so you can mm -hmm. actually go onto the Washington Department of Health website and find some resources to have your water tested. Yeah. It's only about 25 to $50 typically, so it's not super expensive. Yeah. But again, if you've got old pipes or old paint, those are kind of the big exposures. Yeah. Also for parents who work in a job that exposes them to lead, so like a shooting range, or if they work in remodeling or construction, they really need to be thoughtful about what they're potentially bringing home and tracking into the house. So they can actually bring some of that lead Absolutely. back into the house, yep. interesting. Yep. Uh, if you suspect lead, uh, your child might be exposed to lead, yeah. what, what, what can you do uh, yep. immediately, long term? Yeah, so definitely go to your pediatrician or your family doctor and ask to have the child's blood tested, so they can do it with just a simple blood test. Yeah. Um, and then if you find that the level is high, depending on how high it is, we re may re recommend treatment, or we may just say we need to eliminate exposures and then retest in a month or two. All right, Dr. Elizabeth Mead, thanks for joining us once again, appreciate it. You're welcome. Back over to you.